Morning chaps, welcome along to the vlog. We're in today on a Sunday, would you believe it? But uh, yeah, well, we've got to get a lot of beer ready for Christmas. So we're thinking about doing some Christmas advent calendars this year, you know, a beer style advent calendar with maybe 12 or 24 can options. Hopefully all of our beer, but if not, we'll substitute it with some good local stuff. You'll see anyway, it'll be on the website. Thinking about sticking some type of pre-order thing up there. Harrisonsbrewery.com forward slash sharp. So one of the beers that we're making today is one that I've never brewed before. It's the German Pilsner. The recipe will be available on the website for you to peruse. But it's uh, basically using lager malt, bit of cara, and then tetanang for bittering and flavour. And we're going to shoot for about 5.2% ABV. So we've got a couple of light beers in the advent calendar selection. So we'll have this Pilsner style lager kind of a cross between the two I think and then also we'll be making a Kolsch which will be hopefully brewed this week I do have to start off the yeast for it so our Bernie Sanders yeast is now ready we've done a cell count I might show you a little bit of that later on we've also done a cell count for this Bohemian lager yeast Mangrove Jacks M82 you can see we've got 12.3 thousand billion cells in there 9.1 thousand billion cells in here and then the Kvirk yeast well because of how it clumps and it really does kind of clump uh, I could only get a count of 612 billion cells there but I think there's more in there than that I don't think that was a true representative value and then this is what we'll start off today for the Kolsch and we'll brew that at the end of the week so, just a quick intro, uh, you, many of you may have heard we're going into another lockdown again on, the, uh, on Thursday, uh, which is a shame, you know, we've just had uh, a big meeting with all the staff members, trying to give them confidence that we can continue to stay open under these tier 3 restrictions and then of course, kaboom, blown out of the water again with another lockdown. So. We'll see where we go from there. Anyway, I'm going to finish off mashing in here because we're just at a crucial moment now. And uh, I'll come back shortly. Right, coming into the kitchen, gents. So we'll just have a look. What we've got here is the booking form. So today is the last day that we're going to be doing Sunday dinners um, until maybe Christmas time or something like that if they let us open back up again. But as you can see, we've got the glads in here prepping for, oh uh, look at that, perfect timing. Prepping for Sunday lunch today. So some proper Yorkies coming out of the oven. They look really good, mate. They look like uh, little monkeys with feathers on when you turn them upside down. Do you put them back in to do brown bottoms a little bit then? Yeah, it just makes them a little bit more stable for keeping them up there so they don't sink and go flat. So we're hoping we have a good turnout for what is probably going to be our last Sunday dinner for at least four weeks, maybe even longer. But we'll keep plugging away at it until the regulations change again, which no doubt they will. Probably on the second, but yeah, we'll, we're going nowhere. The brew day's progressing nicely. Mash ton dug out. Tetnanga hops in. Three more chargers ready to go in there as well. And I think it's about time we set off this coal yeast for a batch of beer that we'll be brewing later on in the week. The yeast going into the beer we're brewing today, however, is this stuff here. It's the Craft Series Mangrove Jacks Bohemian Lager Yeast M84. I've never used it before, so we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I've taken my small 2 litre Erlenmeyer flask. Here he is. And it's been sat in a bucket of acid sanitizer. And uh, we'll just empty that out. 
and then here we've got a container of wort from a best bitter brew day that I did a few weeks ago and these are just sat at um, ambient temperature and uh, they seem to be perfectly fine. I'm going to try and do this one-handed because I don't have a tripod with me so this may go terribly wrong but all I'm doing effectively is trying to pour uh, <laughs> this ain't going to work I'm trying to pour the wort into there oh gosh I think I've got it there you go. So the idea of this is it saves me making a yeast starter with uh, dry malt extract. I can just take a few litres of this work straight out of the boil kettle during a brew day and it comes out the boil kettle at boiling into these uh, cubes and then they cool down in the cubes meaning we don't have to chill them and uh, when you put the lid on it kind of vacuums up and seals there we go that'll do meaning that it's all well relatively sterile actually when it comes out of the boil for an hour and then because I've now opened this and without a doubt introduced some air into the top headspace to prevent any further growth of organisms that I don't really want We'll refrigerate it. That'll still be good to go into another yeast starter. In fact, I'll get another two for the five litre ones out of that. But if I left it out, I'm sure it might start to ferment. Well, as you can see, we've got the other ones sat there and they're just sat. They're vacuumed in almost like a, a jar of, you know, canned tomato sauce or something like that. And they're perfectly fine. They're not uh, gonna start fermenting at all. So now we've got our uh, starter, we just need to add the yeast. I'm not going to try and do this one-handed, because it definitely won't work. Right, that's in. I'm just fishing down to the bottom of this acid, because we've got a little stir bar that I'm going to throw in there. And we've got the yeast in. You'll probably not see it. It's very difficult to see. There we go, the stir bar's just clicked into position. You can hear it whizzing around now. And what we're gonna do is let that uh, start for the next couple of days. And when it's finished fermenting, we're gonna come back and do a yeast cell count. Now the packet says it's got 200 billion cells in there. I imagine that's plus or minus 10% at least. So we want to be looking at at least double after this just over one and a half litre starter has finished doing its thing. And then we'll transfer it into one of these five litre ones and let it go again. All right, folks, well, I've just briefly come upstairs. Hopefully I'm not sharing any passwords with you today. Uh, I've come up to order some more cans so we can can uh, the beers that I'm making this week ready for December and I just quickly flicked up the CCTV and I thought it'd be an interesting uh, to show you exactly how the operation is going in the pub in terms of social distancing and how we are actually managing to serve people so obviously the image is slightly distorted here a little bit because of the camera angle but you would normally, in this area of the pub, we'd have another two tables just here where JJ's walking. And these tables, potentially, would be holding groups of up to six people. So you can see that our waiting staff here are wearing masks and uh, taking away the dirty dishes and whatnot. And obviously everybody here, as you can see, is eating a meal, apart from this chap over here. But you can see the little salt and vinegar and pepper pot tray. They've got plates here. So, give you a perspective. This area alone in our pub could potentially have 6, 12, 18, 27, up to 
about 34 people dining in there and we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're at a third or below capacity there, which gives you a little insight into how difficult it is. But I'm pleased to say that these people have come out to support us of what is potentially our last Sunday, um, potentially in 2020. And we can see Sam walking around downstairs. We've just got a couple sat downstairs here. If they watch the vlog, they'll recognize themselves as Liam and Jean. And uh, then if we have a look outside in the, uh, in the marquee, we've got people relatively spread out. We've got a family group on the table here. We've got a small family group over here. And as you can see, a couple of family groups up here. I think this is a boyfriend and a girlfriend having something to eat. And there's a couple of people dining over there. But there we go, look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve people outside in an area that we think pre-COVID or hopefully post-COVID could hold upwards of 80 people. And if the marquee's not there and it's the beer garden alone during summer, we can get more than 100 people in there. So it just shows you how difficult it actually is for us to operate under these conditions. And then you'll see the guys behind the bar, Sam, JJ and Lorraine. And then we've got oh, Elaine and uh, Gav up at the top having some food there. And you'll notice that I know most of the customers by name as well. And that's not because I drink in there a lot. It's because these people have shown their support for us and the way we do things at the Brew Shed and Harrison's Brewery pretty much since we opened the doors. Uh, which is why I do have the confidence that we'll be around after this COVID event because people actually uh, come in and help us out as often as they can and uh, even regardless of these extremely tough restrictions that we're all working under at the minute. So I thought you'd just like to see that, the workings of a pub on a Sunday during the highest level of COVID restrictions that we've seen in the country prior to us being closed down uh, which is happening on Thursday by the way if you weren't aware but there we go and right on cue the alarm is going off which means we're ready for a second hot drop while the news is on right I think it's getting to the time now where I've uh, I've had enough, folks. Oh, look, that's fermenting away already. Yes, nice. So this is that beer. Uh, where's the label for it? This is that Kolschist. That's taken off. Um, you'll notice on the bottom I've got a little bit of um, cling film between the stir plate and the flask because we had a boil over. I wouldn't say a boil over, but just a kind of a really vigorous fermentation. And it went down here and went onto the electrics, tripped everything out. So I had to strip it all down and clean it out. Fortunately, it didn't fuck up the, uh, the circuit board, fortunately. So from then on, we've put it on a RCD just so it trips that one and not everything in the building like it did before. But yeah, it's getting to the point now where I'm uh, getting ready to go home. But I guess my HLT's full. Yeah. So we'll just set that to just drain. So all this hot water now is gonna go to waste because I'm having to knock out at 16 degrees because of course we're brewing a Pilsner stroke lager. So, we've got the uh, FV set for 12. That'll cool down a little bit more over the coming day. It's certainly gonna be cold enough in the brewery for that to happen. But while I'm here, well, I think what I'm gonna do, folks, is come over to the stock area and pinch a can of the old label of Vacant Gesture these are nearly all gone now. I've just had somebody put an order in on the website for 60 cans, 40 cans of 
proof and 20 cans of vacant. Crazy. So, let's get a glass. And, uh, well, before I go, I'll join you all in a pint. A pre lockdown pint, shall we call it. I don't have a tripod, so I'm going to try and prop the camera up a little bit there. I don't know if I'm gonna be in shot or anything here, we'll see. So a pre-lockdown pint before we close down again uh, on Thursday. We've got loads of bookings for Wednesday, which is nice to see. Everybody's still coming to support us on the last day. I thank you all very, very much. So plenty of beer available on the website at the minute. Unfortunately, not plenty of coconut shy. Would you just look at that? Now you see, if you give these beers enough time, they will clear properly. All of them will. And they're all vegan as well. Let's have a go. Ugh. That's what I'd call a scarecrow beer. Outstanding in its field. And I think on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I'll say thank you very much for joining me on another vlog. Keep your pecker up. It ain't all that bad. It'll be over soon, I'm pretty sure. And I hope we're all still here at the end of it all. I'll drink to that. Cheers, folks. See you on the next one.